Hello fellow Sudokans and welcome to Zen and the Art of the Guardian Sudoku Puzzle for 12th Thursday the 12th of May 2022. I hope you're doing okay today. Um, today I'd like to just try to promote Sudoku uh, a little bit and if you're wondering about this game you might have just landed on this channel by accident and not know much about Sudoku. Uh, it's a nice game that can because it forces you to concentrate, can actually take your mind off some of the other problems that you might have, difficulties in life or what's going on in the world. Um, a lot of people that play this game are in the at the older end of the spectrum. In fact, the vast majority of people who watch this channel are over 55. <coughs> and that's the demographics that I get to see on, on the YouTube channel. And uh, it's a sad fact of life that as we get older, our own bodies deteriorate, but also those loved ones around us that we know have been familiar with, loved all our lives, also can be suffering or, of course, can pass away. Uh, and just be, because statistically that's, the, that's how it is, right? I mean, you know, this is something that can't be denied. Um, it's, it, it makes sense. People die when they get older and nobody, nobody lasts forever, so uh, so Sudoku is a, an, an interesting way of taking your mind away from the reality of life sometimes, forcing you to concentrate on finding these numbers. Uh, it, can, it can be a help, it can be a sucker um, to help uh, in times when you might want to dwell on bad news and that kind of thing, which is something that can happen to any of us, of course. All right, so um, with that in mind, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the rules of Sudoku in case you are new to the game. And then I'll tell you that today's uh, game here is the Guardian Hard Level uh, Puzzle, and you can find a link to it in the description for this video, as you can for every game on this channel. Uh, right, so how do we play Sudoku? Well, we look for... Well, we have, I should explain, a grid of nine squares across by nine squares down, and in each of our columns down and our rows across, we put the numbers 1 to 9. The numbers must not repeat, so 1 to 9 because there are 9 squares, and then we have these blocks which are outlined in bold, and they also need numbers 1 to 9. Obviously they can't repeat either, and that's it. So it's a very simple game to understand the concept of, and sometimes it's a very simple game to play, but sometimes it's a very difficult game to play. Um, um, it's a good idea often to try to think forward a bit and the more you think forward the more you are taking your mind away from uh, difficult things you know um, so um, I've spotted something which is kind of a, like a what you might call a, a couple of move, a one move ahead or something like that but I'm just wondering if I need to share that with you just yet or whether I can find something easier uh, since we may have some complete beginners with us today. Okay, I've seen something. So let's say this eight blocks across here like this and eight blocks across here and then eight blocks down here. So in this block here, we know that, and when I say block, I mean this small mini grid here. We know that eight fits into that square there. Then we can say eight, disallowing any squares down here becoming eight. Same for this. Remember, only one digit per column. So when we look at this pattern like this, we can know that the 8 has to be in this square here. It can't be anywhere else. Uh, we can't do much else with the 8s. When we look and see what's left, we see that we're left with this pattern for 8s. And there's no way that we can tell. Now, if we know that this square here is an 8, we will know that this square here is an 8, but we don't. If we know that this is an 8, we will also know that this is an 8, but we can't tell which is which for the moment, so we just have to leave that. Um, okay, let me tell you about the kind of move forward, because um, I think uh, you've got the idea of the game now. So let's do this. When we see 7 blocking down here and 7 blocking across here like this... Oh, actually, I didn't need to. <laughs> I thought I, I didn't see the 7 here. I was going to say 7 can be one of these two squares, but I didn't notice actually we've got 7 here as well. 
so 7, we can now place it in the square here. 7 across here, 7 across here, 7 up here. So this square here must be a 7. Um, and it's about making mistakes in Sudoku. Uh, you will um, make mistakes because everybody does, unless you are a computer, of course. And if you're a computer, I don't think you'll gain much enjoyment from this channel. So switch off now, computer. Um, right, where to look next? Now this is always the this is the perennial cry of the Sudoku. Where to look next? Because if we could only decide where to look next, it would save so much time. Well, it doesn't help very much at the moment, I think, but I do happen to notice that 9 and 4 and 9 and 4 are in the same row here, so block across here. So that means that we know that these two squares here must contain 9 or 4. So that's one thing I know. Um, now, I also know that the 1 blocks this square here, so I know that 1 is in one of these squares. So we've got 1 here. We've got 4 and 9 up here. We've got 6 blocking this square here, so 6 has to be in this square as well. Okay, right. This must contain only 4 or 9, okay? The 1 and the 6 both block this square here, so we know that this is 1 or 6 only. And so what's left goes here. And what's left? 4, 9, 1, 6. So the remaining digit then is a 2. We know that that has to be a 2. Now, actually, I can place 1 and 2 here as well, because 2 blocks across here like this and 2 blocks here. 1 blocks across here and 1 blocks down here. So this, in fact, is either a 1 or a 2. Now, that may help us or may not help us just yet, but it's something that we know. And every all information that we know in Sudoku, we try to keep, because even if it's not useful now, it might be useful later. So knowing this is 1 and 2, that means that in these squares here, we have to have not 1 or 2, um, but anything else that will complete this block. So that's 3 and 6. Is it going to help us? No, it is not going to help us, but we do know that 3 and 6 are in these two squares. Um, ah, but hang on a second. 6 blocks across here, so 6 is in that square there. And now we know that this square here can't be 6. So in fact we know that that must be 6, and this must be a 3. Okay, now we only have one number left to get this, to fill up this uh, row, and the missing number is a 3. So we'll place that there. Uh, now we can get this number here, because if you remember, this was 6 and 1, this was 4 and 9, this was 6 and 1, so now we know this is 6 and 1. We look across and find what else we need. It's not 6, it's not 1, it's got to be a 2, hasn't it? Or, if you remembered this was 1 and 2, you could have said 2 blocking across there, so that has to be a 2. So very often there's multiple ways to find the same digit. There should only be one digit, but there's different ways to find the same information, which is great for us because it means that we don't have to play in exactly the same way. Uh, you don't have to play the game in the same way that I'm playing it. You have your own methods, your own way of doing it, and that's really what the a major part of the fun is, working out your own system, your own way of, of doing things. I played this game for many, many years before I ever saw a video of anybody playing Sudoku. I just played it by myself and taught myself. Uh, four hours ago here and developed my own ideas and ways of thinking about it. Now, as it happens, later on I, I realized that many of those ideas coincided with what other people had found as well, of course, and that's what you do. Uh, you, you try it out for yourself. You find what works for you, what you think you understand, and no one can play in a way that you can play it. And then later on, you you, you check on the online, you say, oh, somebody else had the same idea. <laughs> it's not that original. Nine blocks up here, so this is a nine, and then the missing number here is a two. Now, two blocks this square here, so two is here, and one is the last number we need there. Now we can say one blocking down here, one blocking down here, and one across here, so this is our one, and now we're only one digit left, 
to complete this column here, which is three. Right, now this column here has only one number missing as well, so let's find it. We have one, two, three, four, five. We don't have a six anywhere, so that's got to be a six. The two missing numbers here are five and nine, but we can't place those because we don't have enough information yet, so we have to stop there. But we've got most of this central um, vertical shoot completed already, which is a good thing. Let's work our way out to the wings, shall we? Um, let's have a look now, as I said, the perennial cry. Um, which block is likely to be the most productive? Um, don't really know. So at this stage, you, you might want to, if you're playing on a computer, you might want to highlight the digits. That sometimes helps. Ah, yes, helped me immensely. There you go. Uh, because look, in this column here, we don't yet have a 1, right? But look, we have a 1 blocking this square, a 1 blocking this square, and a 1 blocking this square. So, in this column down here, a 1 must be placed there, can't go anywhere else. And that's going to help us now find our first digit in this empty first block, entirely empty, but not now, because now we have 1s blocking across and up like so. That has to be one there. Now I've spotted something else. Uh, three blocks this square here, three blocks this square here. We don't yet have a three in this row, so we can place our three there. Can you, okay, here's a task for you learners. Can you finish this row for us? Okay, well done. I'm assuming you got it right. The missing numbers in these two squares are 5 and 8. And we have an intersecting 8 down here, so we know this can't be 8. We know that 8 has to go here, and this has to be a 5, right? Now we can say 5 blocking this square here, so 5 goes here. The last missing number here is a 6. Let's place it. So we didn't have any digits up here, and now we've got 3 in in already. Uh, it might be a good idea to look down here. I suspect, just from having played this game for so many years, that looking down here might be good, although we still might find something up there. It's possible. Uh, but let's consider, all right, let's, yeah, let's look down here first. We've got one, we've got two. We don't have three yet. Where can three go? When we look at the intersecting threes, we realize it can go in one of these two squares. Over here, 3 can go in these two squares, so we can't really find it just yet, so that's not going to give us the answer. 4 can appear in one of these two squares. Is that going to give us anything? Um, and over here, no, I think not yet. Okay, how about 5s? 5 is going to be somewhere in, this, in one of these three squares here. Uh, we'll check out 5 over here in case there's anything else going on. 5's are up like this. Possible locations where 5 could appear. No, can't really get a 5 over here from that. How about 6's? Six 6's six can appear like this. How about up here? 6's like that. How about down here? Um, those are possible locations for 6. No, not I don't really see what's going on there. Sevens can appear in these squares and these squares only, so no help there. How about eight? Yes, we found that eight. Now, I didn't find it down here. I did find it up here then. So eight blocking up here and up here and across here. So we should have just stayed on this block, actually. That would have given us uh, our next number. Oh, I just realized that was the final eight, so eight is now finished. Let's click on nine and see what's happening with nine. Is there anything... Uh, mm, still a lot of places where 9 can go. Um, nothing really worthwhile looking at for 9. So now what do we do? So we've placed this 8. So since we placed this 8, it might be a good idea to check out this column here, or maybe this row here, or this block again. Okay. So let's see what's missing in this column. What do we still not have? We don't have a 4. 
a 6 and a 9. Okay, so immediately we see this 6 blocking here and the 6 blocking here. So that means that square has to be a 6. And then we see the 4 blocking this square. So the 4 goes there and then the 9 was the last number for that column. Okay. Now 9 blocks this square here, so 9 goes here. The last number missing is 5 there. Um, Let's come back up to this block at the top here. Six, I see, blocks across there and six blocks up here. So now we know six is in that square. Um, we have two intersecting blocking that square, th these two squares here. So we know that two must fit there. We have seven blocking across here. So this is our seven. The last number to complete this block now is a nine. Nine now blocks across here. So that's a nine in that empty square. Nine blocking across here and down here. This is a nine and there's one number missing for the rest of this row which means it's a four. Um, uh, one number missing down here. The missing number is uh, four. Missing numbers across here are 2, 4, and 5, and we've got 4 and 5 both attacking this square here. This square here can't be 4, can't be 5, has to be 2. And now 2 blocking across this row, across this row, and down here, so that must be a 2. 1 blocking across this row, across this row, this is a 1. I'm looking up here, gives us a 1 here. This is 6, I think, the last number in that um, block. We have one empty square in this row here. Uh, 3, I think it is. Okay. Um, 7 blocks this square here, so 7 goes here. The missing number here is a 5 then. We have one empty square in this column now, missing number three. Right, just little bits to go now, just, uh, just two, four, six empty squares to get. So what's missing from this row? We have one, two, three, four. We don't have five and we don't have six. Five, six, there we go, the six. So six box down here. So this can't be 6, so this is our 6. And the last number here then is a 5. Now 5 will stop this square from becoming a 5. 5 goes here. The last number here is a 4. 4, oops, 4 blocks this square down here. This will be a 4. And to finish today's Guardian hard level grid, they call it hard level. You might consider it more of a medium, but maybe it's, uh, yeah, I guess probably a medium level. 9 will finish the game. And that's it. Um, now, if you enjoyed that, there is lots and lots of Sudoku on this channel to take your mind away from your aches or your pains or your illnesses or your bad news. Get stuck in there and think and concentrate. It will give you a bit of respite. That's it. Should it be respite? <laughs> Whichever you prefer. That's it. Bye-bye.